All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Blind Side Blitz. I am Jim McFeen, of course, alongside of me is Mr. Joe DeCapita. What's going on, Blitz Nation? Welcome back yet again for your NFL dose of football. That's right. Right here, right now. Uh, it's brought to you by grumblingsmedia.com. Head over there to their website. Make sure you give them a check out there uh, for all your political entertainment sports needs. It's all there in one spot. Or you can head over to YouTube just like right now and hit that subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up there. And while you're at it, guess what? We're live. So make sure you drop in the comments down below. Make sure you let us know that you're here. Answer any questions. If you have an opinion, let it be known. We are going to react to it. Uh, you can also head over to rumble.com as well. We're there. Drop a follow. And, of course, anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, and more. Ah, that's a mouthful, Joe, but thank you so that's much. Right. Yeah, it's it's been a little bit here. I'm excited. I'm back from vacation, ready to get talking to some football here. We've been doing the preview shows uh, for mm -hmm. the past, you know, a couple of weeks here, a month and a half Two or weeks, so. Yeah. You know, we covered the AFC. Uh, we did the NFC East, and then we're going to get to the North in just a little bit. But we're going to cover mm -hmm. a couple of uh, things hopping around the, the news. Uh, uh, we're going to get our first taste of preseason football <laughs> coming up, too, on uh, Thursday night here. Yes. Just a few days, Joe. Are you excited? Well, I mean, last week we had the Hall of Fame game. You know, mm -hmm. that was the one game to kick it all off. Until the but, thunderstorm destroyed it, right? Right, <laughs> right before, the, before the early end of it. Uh, but the funny thing is about that is that no starters played. Yeah. Like, everybody was all hyped up about Caleb Williams yeah. and his debut and, and, and the and all the the uh, the top end rookies and what they're going to be able to show and and we didn't really get to see that so and obviously the storm came in and ended that pretty early but now we get to see like the actual preseason kickoff like mm -hmm. this is where all the teams that you know that they're going to be involved in, and we're going to get to see a lot of players that we had question marks on we're going to get we're going to see maybe how each team is going to orchestrate the preseason because not everybody does it the same mm -hmm. you know some people only have their starters play a series, but there's other teams out there that are going to probably let their starters play a quarter in the, in the very beginning, because we don't have four preseason games anymore. Now we're down to three and they're even talking about in the future, maybe it's going down nice, to two. So we'll get to that when, the, if that all unravels, but until then ah. preseason, here we go. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. And uh, so we've been talking about this for uh, a couple of weeks ago. We, we brought up the whole NFL uh, Sunday ticket deal mm -hmm. and the, now the sham that it is here we were all so <laughs> excited that maybe that the NFL could finally get it to them you know and, right. and stuff like that and we all were, were wondering what was going to go down with this because you know they were going to counter on this whole yeah, thing appeal and, is going to happen yes sure. and look and lo and behold now oh. all of a sudden the, the judge is like oh you know the jury <laughs> didn't you know listen to my full instructions and they said they couldn't judge it based on this and that and like right. come on and so it all gets overturned thrown out and the NFL wins again. And, and mm -hmm. I like the statement that they throw out there, too. We're, yeah. we're extremely, you know, proud of what happened. And, and, you know, we're excited. We love this judge a lot. We're like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was easy to uh, buy. Yeah. We get it. Yep. Yep. And it's just, oh, man. Yeah, so, I mean, the NFL Sunday ticket uh, lawsuit overturned, mm -hmm. you know. And, and and just like that, when everybody thought they were going to get a nice little paycheck, uh, you know, from the NFL, uh, guess what? The NFL gets away with yet again another, you know, court case mm -hmm. like i and, and the crazy thing the thing that i've taken away from this too is and and yeah the other side could still appeal and, and try to get it be brought back into court again and whatnot but if this stays the way it is what this offseason has, has told me that the nfl can go through any major court case and win it all yeah like they just have all the power in the world even though they may be in the wrong they still come out on top regardless mm -hmm. of the situation so that's what I've learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny too, because even behind it all, you had also had all the, the other channels in uh partners, direct TV, CBS, ESPN, all of them behind mm -hmm. the NFL too, as well. Right. And like you said, um, this was the one opportunity where even flash were like, wow, maybe we, you know, the little guy can win in some of these situations. Right, exactly. And, you right? know, <laughs> this, this can be a thing and finally some, no. some help here. And no, of course, you, like you said that the NFL figures out a way mm -hmm. and they always do it to get out of it. And yep. we're going to be stuck doing this whole thing here. So it's terrible. Yes, it really is it terrible. Is. It is. Why you do this to your fans? You know, it's, it's just, no good. And, and it's funny is because the lawsuit was started, you know, years, nine years ago by even a, a, mm -hmm. a, a bar owner. You know, I mean, so it was, it was those type of establishments yeah. that really kind of suffer for this because you're jacking up the price, especially with the package that they have to get. 
You know what I mean? To, 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 yeah, they just uh, can't have it out there. Right. You know, it, it, so it's just crazy. You know what, what needs to be done here for these guys to do this. And, uh, Oh, well, you know, it's so we'll move on and we'll mm -hmm. still uh, deal with it and still enjoy our football on yeah. uh, now Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday. In other, in other news, uh, uh, Brandon Ayuk, there's an update for Brandon Ayuk, yes, too. Uh, now we've kind of speculated about it that maybe they might move on from him. Let's wait and see what training camp unveils. And sure enough, he didn't show up. He's not there to practice. And now we're seeing that now he's being allowed to go and seek a trade somewhere. He's being allowed to go talk contract to whatever team is interested in and whatever team is, is curious about making possibly making a trade, uh, you know, finalize an official. So Ayuk, it's it, it, the ball's in your court now, bro. Like go, go out there, see, see whatever you can get in terms of contract and then come back to San Fran. But like, I want to go there. They want, they want to trade. Let's see. Now let's see if, Two things have to happen, too. One, Ayuk's got to be able to agree to a contract. Not officially, but mm -hmm. it's got to be verbalized to where, okay, yeah, if, if you trade for me, then, yeah, I'll agree to this deal. That's one. Uh, and two, both teams have to agree on compensation. Yeah, And I feel like those are two hurdles that, they, that both sides have to overcome, and it's not that easy. So I'm curious to see either how quickly this moves along or it could be delayed until like, you know, very, towards the end of training camp, even into week one. So uh, we'll wait and see. We're here for you guys. So whenever we hear some new news, we're definitely going to let you guys know. Yeah, right now I'm hearing this like two main suitors, and that's the Cleveland Browns and the Patriots. Uh, I don't think the Patriots have much to offer except for just, you know, draft picks uh, because they could be really finishing low this season, you know, uh, depending mm -hmm. on how their season plays out. Yeah. And uh, the Cleveland Browns is interesting because they're talking about 30 year old Amari Cooper yep. being part of that uh, yep. trade and some picks. So that would be interesting. So, um, right. With, with that scenario for the Browns, you don't have to give up as much in compensation. However, the age part is going to come into yeah. factor of like the right. value for Cooper. Cooper's still a really good player, mm -hmm. but how do you value a 30 year old receiver towards the end of his career? Like how much longer is he going to last? Is he mm -hmm. going to last two years, three mm -hmm. years? Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be interesting conversation. And then like for new England, like I know there was a lot of Patriots fans that kind of really reacted to this news and they were like, there's no way we're trading for him and paying him the money that he wants 30 million a year. No way. We're going to come close what? to that. But apparently straight out of new England from the coach's mouth, they are very interested in pursuing for Brandon Ayuk. And they, there's some speculation that they said, Oh, well, they'll probably do some kind of a package deal much like you alluded to Jim about high picks. So it looks like they might say, okay, well, we'll, we'll give you a second round pick um uh Kendrick Bourne and uh a, a second and a third or something like mm -hmm. that nature mm -hmm. right uh mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting interesting to see just how this all shakes out because right now we're hearing those two teams specifically but there's definitely going to be more than that mm -hmm. yeah absolutely all right so yeah that's just a couple of things that are highlighted through the news um we just passed you know recently had the Hall of Fame game out there like joe had said and you know recent inductees all thrown in the mix and now we got to hear and see a little bit of who now will be the next coming first time eligible hall of fame players mm -hmm. and uh we have the list here and we thought it'd be fun to kind of take a look at look at them quick and possibly just debate a little bit and see uh if you guys think that some of these guys are are going to go in first year or, or what and it let me tell you, it is a tough class right here uh, to, to look at. And here we go. We got a Luke Keekley was right there. Eli Manning, uh, Earl Thomas, Marshawn Lynch. I mean, the, the names go on and on here. I mean, I can keep listening, but it's crazy. Uh, and some of the big ones here. I mean, it's, it's got to be Eli the whole Manning list. Too. The list is big. I mean, I mean, too, because these guys are all great players mm -hmm. at their positions and what they were. And um, it, you got to still think of the ones that were um, still out there that just got right. were were just bumped out in the semifinals <laughs> or even didn't make the cut in this right. past uh, you know, decision. Yeah. Um, so I mean, still got Reggie Wayne, some of those guys out there too. So I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's going to be tough to to look at and uh, 
decide when it is time to to vote these guys but you got to think like like marshawn lynch stuff like that he's got to be in there too uh you know he's got to be a good um guy who you would think is going to get a lot of votes potentially to be one of these first timers in here but you know we we know and we've seen uh history kind of prove us wrong to some of these new first time guys like you mm -hmm. have to sit that year be before you can actually go in so it's it just tough depending on what these guys are who are you know these uh editors and, and writers that get these votes decide what they want to do well i mean that that's the thing though is you look at that list right there and that's all first time ballot mm -hmm. then you got the guys that have been waiting already yes and deserve to be in there and it's like the debate is it's got to get heated at times because when you're pulling for a guy, you know, that like Ryan Khalil, he's not really well known about, you know, throughout league circles as far as like fan bases. Mm -hmm. But Ryan Khalil is one of the best centers to to play the game. Mm -hmm. and, and like he might go on this on the side of things and people might pay might not pay as much attention to him just because of the position that he played. But he was great at it. You know, what I mean, so he does deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. However, you got guys like Akib Talib. I mean, shut down type of corner that, you know, you can make your, your case on like, oh, but, but he deserves to be in, more, you know, more than maybe a Ryan Khalil because he impacted the game defensively so much more than often. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. you get into all these different arguments for every player, and I'm sorry, but that list is just insane. I, yeah. I do not, I, I, I do not, um, I'm not envy in envy of the the voters that have to vote on this every single year uh we've said so before but mm -hmm. man th this is not only a very tough crop but everybody on that list in my eyes deserves to be in the hall of fame yeah and, and it's and it's how long you have to wait too because there is a cutoff point like you know mm -hmm. after was it five years or something like that S something similar to that where like after five years like okay well now you're not eligible to get in the hall of fame you didn't make it in the first five years. So it's like uh, it, very difficult. And and there's a lot of people that that have the uh, criticism of Eli Manning. Mm -hmm. Like, should he be? Should he not be? Well, in terms of all time yardage, he's in the top 10 all time. Of of, of yards and passing yards, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for as far as touchdowns, he's in the top 10 for touchdowns all time. Mm hmm. You know, and, and if people say, oh, what's the QBR? What's this? They don't use that in, in the Hall of Fame um, st st uh, statistics here. Yeah, yeah. So throw that out. You know, uh, if you're going to go into like, oh, well, he threw a lot of interceptions. Well, to an extent, though, because, again, extent, when you look at it and you want to say even when you talk about, he, you know, the game's different, stuff like that, we've we talked about Joe Namath, mm -hmm. and we've, we've brought it up with other uh, guys we've had on in an interview to, in on the show, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the difference. And on John, Big John's uh, show, you know, when we talked about people who don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, there's a lot of guys with turnovers. You know what I mean? Yep. But here's, here's the kicker is that he had, he's top 10 in terms of throwing mm -hmm. interceptions. So that could be the knock on him. You know what I mean? But then when you look at yards and touchdowns, he's in the top 10 all time. Mm -hmm. Like, that's kind of crazy when you think about it. Uh, yeah. Even if you take it I mean, a when step. When you're throwing the ball that often. Too, and even, that's yeah. So mm -hmm. here you go. Even you take it a step further, completions. He's in the top 10 for that, too, yes. all time. Yeah. So he has. And I know people like to point at the, the championships and maybe some of the accolades that he that these players have mounted up over their career. But. To me, sorry, Super Bowl championships, uh, individual accolades, you can kind of throw that in there, like maybe Pro Bowl. But at this point in the modern era, the Pro Bowls are like glorified, you know, yeah. popularity votes. Like right. it doesn't really mean as much as it used to. Championships to me is, is more of a team award. It's not necessarily an individual award. So like I don't necessarily count those either, but uh in the end, I, I think Eli Manning deserves to be in there because he has, I mean, to be top 10 all time, mm -hmm. and even if it's just the two categories, even if it is yards and touchdowns and you could throw completions in there, that's pretty darn impressive to right. be top 10 all time out of the history of the NFL. Right. That's crazy. Right. And then you know what? You, you talk about the championships and I get that because I'll say the same exact thing though, too, but how did you perform in those games too? And this is what people talk about when you talk about even legacy too. When you get to the playoffs, what do you do? Dak Prescott's known to be the guy that chokes and doesn't get there. 
Eli Manning has stepped up in the playoffs and even in the Super Bowl. If it wasn't, if he was not playing in that game, if it wasn't for him, they're not, they're not winning. They're not beating Tom Brady. Mm. Shrugging off a sack, a dude's taking you down, swallowed up, and somehow gets out of there. Sees you know David Tyree hocks it up to there to right where it needs to be, where Rodney Harrison could not get him. You know, he even yeah. pounded at it and amazing. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. amazing plays. And again, the throw to you know Mario Manningham and then Plaxico Burrs. Just you know the 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 toughness too on top of it, and the Giants again in those runs. It, you could talk about the defense, and I get that and stuff like that. But if you don't have Eli Manning there, they are not winning. They're not doing it. And that franchise, you see where the franchise was even before they're trying to grasp at straws and trying to get different guys, carry you know you know Collins and things right. like that. They made it to the Super Bowl with him, but that was like a sham. You know they they mm -hmm. beat a team that just wasn't. They weren't, you know, playing to to their ability there, and they snuck in and they got demolished when they got there to the to the uh, Baltimore Ravens. They didn't deserve to be there, really. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They just yeah. happened to get there. Um, and once they got Eli Manning there, their their the franchise changed for the better. You know what I mean? Got back to the glory days. The you know the 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 thing that they pride themselves on, Giants pride, Big Blue, and and that brought that back. Since Eli's been gone, that's the thing they've even been searching for. You know, what's going on? You know, Daniel Jones, it's not it, this and this. And, you know, the mm -hmm. Giants are laughing stock and things like that. And that's the difference that a person makes, I think, too, on top of it and why even they should be uh, in the Hall of Fame as well. That's one one argument I'd have to say. Right, right. All right, we've got back in the Stone Age in the house with us. What's going uh, on, Stone Age? All right, what does he have to say here, Joe? He said, yo. <laughs> Here is the masculine way of determining who deserves to get into the Hall of Fame. Was he among the two to three players at his position while he was playing? Eli was not. Case closed. Keep him out. I disagree. Really? I, I, don't, I disagree two too. To three? It depends on what era you're even in. I mean, yeah. you, you talk about there was even a time when... I think, yeah, Tom Brady and, and Joe and, and uh, John Elway were in the same, you know, in the league together mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You want to say all of a sudden at the time, you know, yeah. if, if one of those guys was a two or three, they don't belong <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. I mean, that makes no sense whatsoever. Well, honestly, there's plenty when you, other players, uh, like you're, when, you're, when you're looking at linemen and things like that, too, that, that I think deserve to be there for what they were even for their franchise, were they ever top? One, one, you know, two or three, like every single consecutive year. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, to, to be the top two or three in your position while you were playing, there's a lot of variables to that oh, because you so could have many variables. you could have uh um, let, let's just say for example, like John Elway in his prime. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where you're where you're on the tail end of your prime and you're not in the top five anymore. Right. The, like John Elway's number one, but you're 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 not you're at the end end of your rope, but you're barely hanging on to the top ten or something like that. So you don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame because you had a bad last season or or two or whatever. Like, no, nah, right. I, I don't agree with that ideology. But what I do agree with is that what's cool about if you go to pro um, pro football, football reference, uh, reference mm -hmm. there. They do a good job of keeping like everything in categorized and, and and the stats they're all lined up. They also what they do is they have a line of average Hall of Fame for each position, so it gives you basically a a a a, a, a threshold to like kind of like get gauge on how good a pl a player do you think they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Are they close to the average? Are they above the average? I, I think anybody that's above the average. Uh, for any given position is a definite shoe in because you're above the average you're in, you're with the best of the best but when you start to get into like maybe the average range or below the average then you can have to start having debates or, or disagreements about who belongs in there because i would i just looked up ryan khalil for example right because he's on the first team ballot mm -hmm. he's well below the average for in terms of hall of fame uh points that they give yes yeah they do the give so the hall of fame points uh, so percentage. because he's an offensive lineman you kind they they definitely have done the 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 st statistical breakdown of, of linemen and they've really honed in and done a good job i feel like of of finding who deserves greatness uh in it eternity in the hall and and who is kind of just average or below average so mm -hmm. 
he's not even close. So, mm-hmm. like, to be honest, you can make the argument, like, as good as Ryan Khalil was mm-hmm. for, for the Panthers and, and so forth, right. as good as he was, he, not really deserving of being in the hall. He was good, but not that great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, we've got Al Bundy, you know. In All right. Uh, we got Al Bundy. Uh, nice. and he's, he's, he's shaming Dak Prescott here. He says Dak Midcott is an overrated <laughs> stat pattern, 17, 117 and 117. Man, there's <laughs> haters out there. All right, well, thank you to, for uh, coming to the show. We appreciate it. Uh, back to the Stone Age. What has he got? Uh, well, then, said, that's... Uh, he said, well, then let's put it in the whole in family. The whole family. Archie, Archie, Archie Manning man. for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is what well, people go to. Oh, it's because of the name and all this. Come on, man. No. I mean, in that era, there were so many good quarterbacks, too. It's tough. It, I've said this when we talk about uh, Peyton Manning and even R- Philip Rivers, when mm-hmm. I have to defend Philip Rivers. Uh, he had to meet Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in the playoffs consecutive uh, for consecutive years, first couple of years he's in the season with that with Danny and Tomlinson you know, on his team. And, you know, that team was stacked. Antonio Gates, you know what I'm saying, with that defense and that offense. Right. But they every time they got to the playoffs, they end up meeting those two Hall of Fame quarterbacks on top of it. So it's tough to get to a certain round. They made it to, I think, in mm-hmm. the championship game a few times, but never got to the Super Bowl because, again, this is what you're against. Is that a bash on Phillip Rivers? I don't think so, but you, those teams were so good and those quarterbacks were so good. Right. It, it's just tough. You know, they were close so many times. You just couldn't get it done. Now, do I push him out of the Hall of Fame? I think it's debatable, but I think just as debatable as is the Eli Manning thing. Uh, I think Philip Rivers with the stats has, has been there, too, as well. And, and so, I mean, it's something that should be questioned, uh, but not to say that because he wasn't top two or three yep. uh, at his position. And again, for w- what year? I mean, you, these guys played for d- a decade. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I mean, it's it's just crazy for it to go go like that. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Sorry, you know, back to so you're you're free to your own opinion. I get yeah. that too. So right, I, of course, I, I, we love your opinion though too. We we absolutely do. So absolutely, it's all good. Um, but some of these other guys again, I think Marshall Lynch is really good to put up for there too. Yep. Um, the the tougher ones I think are going to be Adam Vinatieri, the kicker. Uh, Kickers are always tough to they're get. They're tough in. and um. Vernon Davis. I mean, tight ends. We've shown, we've seen too. It's yeah. tougher to try, kind of get tight ends in there. But ever since, um, maybe Devin Hester is the guy that kind of changes it all for everything. I didn't think Devin Hester was going to get in this. No, early. I, I I was blown I just, away. I didn't that blew see, my mind. I, I didn't understand why he got the votes to get in because yes, he impacted the game in terms of special teams. But when he he played wide receiver as a position, and did he impact that at all? No, like there was times when he when he had big moments, obviously at wide receiver, he just ended up being wide open because he was so fast and and caught the ball and got a touchdown. But it wasn't it was not even a speck on the radar uh, of other wide receivers that have been there, done that. So. Like if you're being hired to be a wide receiver, but then, okay, wide receiver didn't work out, but I'm a phenomenal return man. Like yeah, you change the game from time to time for sure for you for your returns and mm-hmm. you and, and that and it was great. It was great to watch. However, what you were originally hired to be was a wide receiver, a devastating speedster and wide receiver, and you couldn't get that done. So I think rewarding a a just a returner, like now, for example, like if he was both, if he had a average career at wide receiver, but was amazing as a returner, then then I think I could get on board with that. It's like mm-hmm. okay, okay, he was a, he was a yeah. he was a decent receiver, wasn't the best, but man, was he a killer in the return game. Then you got a dual threat, yeah. and and to me, I could get on board with that. But the, just returner, yeah. like I, I don't know, I I didn't see that, but right. yeah, I was surprised too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like somebody's like it's put on the hands team all the time. It's like this guy's great. We put him out there and he just delivers every <laughs> single time. You know, what I mean, a place kicker. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here we go. We've got uh, back to the Stone Age. He's got some more to say here, Joe. What is he What's got? up? Uh, I said, uh, Philip <laughs> Crimea Rivers, <laughs> another whiny diva. Only only way he gets in the hall is if he needs a job polishing the bus of real quarterbacks. Ooh. Oh man, he's out there throwing wow. knives out there, man. <laughs> wow. Back to the Stone Age. See? So yeah, everybody has an opinion about this too. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is too, when we're debating this Eli Manning thing, um, and even the Philip Rivers thing, if you want to talk, 
I'm not even saying these are the first time candidates. I'm not even saying Eli gets in this this year, like next year, 2025. You know what I mean? It's possible. He, he's possible. It's possible, but I definitely see that it's open for debate because I know a lot of people don't think he so, should be there. But so I'm, I'm just gonna, saying, what I'll, tell you, I'll tell you right now, yep. as it stands now, um, the average Hall of Fame, that threshold that we were talking yes, about, the threshold that, that um, he is below maybe. that. He okay. he is below it by like maybe 15 spots. But when you take into consideration, like he's top 10 all time, mm -hmm. like through the history of the NFL, all time in terms of yards and touchdowns thrown, like, come on, like the guy, listen, you don't have to like the guy. You, you, you don't have, you know, you even, yeah. even if you love him, whatever, but when you do, when you achieve greatness in terms of how many yards, I mean, passing yards, that's just crazy. He had, what was it? 57,000 passing yards. Mm -hmm. Insane. Tenth, like 10th overall, like through the history of the NFL, I, that's a huge achievement, I think. Right. And tell you the truth, like with, with what though, you know what I mean? What main receivers did they have? They ended up getting well, they had receivers a few different times. Yeah, but not like, you know, I mean, some of these other guys, you know, had Randy Moss and things like that and stuff. And even a lot, you know, for for a year or so, he had, you know, Odell Beckham Jr., you know, which Odell yep. had his best season there. But he had good but, receivers. That's all he needed. Mm -hmm. But like, let, let's face it, like he had he had good receivers. Mario Manningham, you know what I mean? Like right. those guys were good receivers. They weren't the best. No, but they were good receivers. And and I get it. Some of the plays that they made together was insane. Mm -hmm. You know, so like. Yeah, you don't have to have a like a clear cut elite number one wide receiver to be successful as a quarterback. You just gotta have good enough receivers, and you get them the ball. They mm -hmm. make they make the catch. That simple. It's a simple game. I think a lot of us sometimes overcomplicate things, but Eli is in my eyes. I think he deserves to be in. Maybe not this. Maybe not this this uh, run here, mm -hmm. but. Um, he, he I, I see I definitely can see him getting in at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay. All and right. then one <laughs> sure, thing because sure, sure. you mentioned Philip Rivers, yeah, right? Sure. Philip Rivers is only three spots under the, the threshold here. Yeah, so you he's know? there. And, he's and, and closer than huh? you want to talk about passing yards. He's mm -hmm. higher in, in the top 10 list. Mm -hmm. He say he threw for 63,000 passing yards and 421 passing touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So if you want to if you want to put a a rank on it one two three four right. five six he is sixth all time in terms of passing yards and touchdowns thrown yep like pretty pretty special company right up mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. Peyton Manning Brett Favre Drew Brees Tom Brady mm -hmm. you know underneath him he's got Matt Ryan Dan Marino Aaron Rodgers. I think the time's going to come, too, for Matt Ryan, where people are going to debate this, too, especially how he kind of exited the league um, and then squandering that that Super Bowl when they were there. Mm -hmm. I think Judgment Day is going to come for Matt Ryan, too, when it comes to the, the Hall of Fame. And it's See, be I don't harsh. think I don't think you should hold that against him. No, I know, but I'm just saying, especially with a lot of people, just the way you view him. I think lately, I think that's the people are going to question that when it comes up. Because Matt Ryan is right above Eli Manning in terms of uh, yards and touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting when the time comes. Uh, we've got uh, who's that? William Dan Pilar in the house with us tonight. <laughs> Hopefully, I get it down right one of these times. Uh, what does he say, Joe? He said, uh, the problem with Eli and those passing yards is that the NFL is now built around the passing game. Bigger numbers are coming. However, he destroyed the Patriots perfect season and beat Brady twice. That is correct. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about his era of playing. It's not the modern era. It was before all these past happy offenses started happening. So, you have to you have to think of it that way too. Like it, there is uh, time slots that you have to separate these players from other players that you're going to compare them to. So yes, William is correct. The modern era now, everything is geared towards passing, passing, passing. So those records, those passing records, are going to be broken mm -hmm. just because we're also adding games. Adding games, we're, we might we're yep. going to pretty soon we're going to have an 18th week. So the so these quarterbacks. Maybe or maybe not might have an extra game because the way we've discussed about having two bye weeks, it kind of offsets everything. You don't really gain a week in terms of playing time, but you gain a week in terms of revenue for the NFL. 
So maybe they do that idea and it doesn't change much, but, but you're right, William, to an extent for the modern era. Yes. The, the offenses are way more pass happy and thus you're going to see boosting in, in terms of stats that are probably going to break some of these teams, some of these uh, quarterbacks records, Mm -hmm. maybe not all, but some of them. Uh, He also says Namath uh, is in because of one game, Eli, beating arguably the goat twice deserves to get in. And uh, I loathe the Mannings. <laughs> see, this is what, it, see, this is that last comment is what it all boils down to. Because mm-hmm. everybody boils down to whether they, they like the person or not is how right. they want to do it. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, it's crazy, but at least he's kind of given up to the fact, you know, you know, that he has beaten Tom Brady. I get that stuff, but um, when we look at these, when they do the matchups to, Hey, the, the, let's look at the stats between Peyton Manning versus Tom Brady and see who won, you know, this, meant, it's a, it's a game of, of teams, two teams playing. There's yeah. different personnel that changes every year. But like I said, it's moments within those games that you need to stand out and look at and say, Hey, okay, mm-hmm. this is, you know, an elite move, or this is what gets him there. This is where they step up right. and do something. And that's kind of what, what we're talking about here was those types of moments. What those two plays that they've had in those two Super Bowls are going down in some of the best plays in Super Bowl history. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and that's what moments in, in some of these Hall of Fame players are made of. Like he even said with the Joe Namath. Thing. That's also an issue for the voting process is because mm-hmm. there's these stigmas mm-hmm. of, of certain players. Terrell Owens, how long did he have to wait? Oh yeah, damn that was to a the, major one. Damn near, near to the end, admitted it. Damn near to the last year of his eligibility, mm-hmm. because certain journalists and reporters had beef with him in the locker room, and he he wouldn't talk to them, or they got into disagreements and arguments or whatever. So, like, to be honest with you, when you're voting a player, it's not about like your interaction with him or how you feel about him or maybe something that he did that you don't agree with. It should be just about his play on the field. It should be about what he accomplished for his respected team and the greatness that he, that he achieved at the, by the end of his career. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like people need to stop judging him because, Oh, I didn't like him because you know, he was awful confrontational in the locker room. So what? Suck it up, Buttercup. Yeah, yeah just vote for the guy because he deserves so many it. times. You know, and just walked away. Come on. <laughs> All right, we've got William again. He's he has something else to say. Matt Ryan and uh, Kyle Shanahan belongs in the Raspberry Hall of Fame. <laughs> the wing of losers who choke. Oh man, that's harsh. That's messed up. That's messed and up. I didn't you, know there was a Raspberry Hall of Fame. And I tell you, <laughs> I tell you right now. Um, well, William's trying to get the law passed so he can put an extension on the on the hall. But uh, you like that? You like that? <laughs> what I'll say about that is I don't blame Matt Ryan because yeah. Matt Ryan wouldn't have choked if Kyle Shanahan called the right plays yeah. because everybody knows from that Super Bowl mm-hmm. that if he started running the ball instead of still throwing when they were at the Patriots side of the field and if he just ran the clock yeah. even if they didn't get the first down if they just ran the clock down there's no way Patriots would have had enough time to come back so both their running backs were running outrageously oh, that game. They were killing it. They were killing it. And then they the defense on top it. of it. You know, and yes, yep. they started to get a little tired because again, they were on the field all the time but because mm-hmm. of the turnovers and what was going on. But like yeah. you said, yeah, it, it's what you do and to decide in that moment yep. in situational football, and you failed. And you see it in the last two Super Bowls that the 49ers were in too. Yeah. It seems like every single time when it gets to crunch time or a team, he you know, feels like they got the momentum. He crumbles and like freaks out. Perfect example. He did the same exact thing with the 49ers. Same thing against the Chiefs. When they had the they had the lead, they had control of the game, they had the ball, run the clock out. Instead, Christian he's still McCaffrey. calling for passing plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey was balling out. Oh and my god, that dude was a man. Yep, yep. yep. It was, it was one hell crazy. of a dude right there for in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Oh, oh man, this is no dude. This is a man. Uh, He's man. a dog. <laughs> there you go. All right. So yeah, uh, there's the the Hall of Fame debate. Like I said, we will find out. You know, next year what 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 the uh, finalists end up being and stuff like that. And we'll follow that, and that'll be fun stuff to debate. Uh, yeah, all that when it when Ryan it shows Khalil up gets like in that, over so. Akeem Talib. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that'd be crazy. <laughs> That would be some craziness. Or what about Earl Thomas? Stuff like that, too, maybe. Yeah, I, right? see, that's the thing, too, is that, like, Earl Thomas, now, he fits in the category of defensive back, mm-hmm. which, with Akib Tlaib, he's mixed with that. 
So it's not written, not necessarily like a safety has their own like position yeah. grouping that they can judge them on. Yep. They're being judged with corners, outside corners, nickel corners, you know, so it's a little murky mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. All right. So let's move on. Now we're going to talk about the uh, NFC North. And we're going to do our preview of these teams here. Everybody's excited about the, this, uh, this division this season right. we get to see some of it on hard knocks and all that stuff real, too, right? real quick before we even get into the division here what's up uh i just wanted to touch on this because not a lot of people are, are enlightened to this is that the well, nfl the nfl is requiring all head coaches to do in-game interviews with the sideline reporters starting this season quote each team has to provide a head coach one in the first half and one in the second half for all teams. So every single game in the first half and the second half, the head coaches need to be available for the sideline reporters to talk to them. It's like they're taking a page out of college football mm -hmm. where, you know, that you see the coach running off for halftime and then the, and then you got the sideline reporter. Hey, what do you think is going to happen in the second half? What adjustments are you going to make? Can I get your social security number? Mm -hmm. Like, it's so intrusive, especially at this level for the NFL. Like now we're trying to be a little bit more like college, like, not, like just, be, it's all about business. Now we're going to, what answers do you think you're going to get? Well, yeah, it, it's kind of dumb too. And you see it, they already started to do this, uh, but now they're NFL is making to, it yeah. mandatory, you know, because you see right. the sideline reporters are always trying to do, no. you know, you see them on the side before they get going, even now as, as the first play is going to get started. Right. Like, hey, here, coach. Yeah, I see. What did you guys do to make decisions, you know, in the second half, mm -hmm. you know, to turn things around and stuff? I'm like, oh, we just got to play better, you know, limited turnovers, <laughs> and, uh, player game. All right. All right. Thanks, coach. I'm like, all right, cool. I but, learned a whole lot, you know, in that 20 seconds right. of that interview. But Thank you know what's so really going to happen in the NFL? Is is they're gonna say no comment and just keep running? Oh yeah, or yeah, right. or like Mike McDaniel, I can see him here. You run with me, run you know with me. I mean? and then he's just going. I'm only interviewing this because I don't want to get fined. That's right. Like that. I'm only saying because I don't want to get fined. Right. Huff it. Let's go. Double time. Uh, you know what I mean? He's great for that. So I, right. I I'm looking to see those interviews. You know, so that'd be good. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, okay. NFL, like it'll be interesting. Let me say, let me say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be worse if if like they sit do the sit down like I think the XFL was doing and stuff like that where they sit down with like players hey you know after after that you know you just ran you know the whole length of the field after you you know took that return for a touchdown play take us through that play i love that i love that question oh, this is the terrible. dumbest freaking Did question you? i think ever that any reporter ever say Let's take us through that play now what were you thinking here what were you did, attempting to do uh did you oh, watch the play are you kidding me you know like did you watch it like, what's going through my head? I don't know. Try and score. Like, what do you want me to say? It's, it's ridiculous. Everybody but else anyways. watched it. Yes. Yes. That's it. Okay. So now let's get to uh, the NFC North preview. And let's start off with the Chicago Bears. The Bears. The Bears. Joe, what do you got here? Let's go. So let's start off with the wide receivers here. You know, mm. obviously everybody knows DJ Moore. Like he's he's like the savior of Chicago at this point. He's their number one option. And then they bring in veterans like Keenan Allen, a guy who I thought was never going to leave the Chargers. I thought he was like a life, a lifer never. there. Uh, I was going to retire a Charger. And here he is heading over to Chicago to team up with DJ Moore. I'm happy when I'm playing. They drafted in the first round Roma Dunze that some people speculated was going to fall to them, and rightfully so. And, and he did. Uh, can't pass that up. So they took they take him, who was uh, much highly touted around the league as being a top three type of wide receiver coming out. So they get some great value there. After that, you, you start to look at their their backups, and I'm not really thrilled with it. I mean, I understand that they have some some decent halfway decent players that that can come in and maybe rotate in or whatever, but. No, nobody that's going to really push for a job or anything. So there's really no competition uh, in, in the second layer of, of their, the receivers. You right. got Tyler Scott, you got Velas mm -hmm. Jones jr. Who who's been with Chicago, but still hasn't been able to carve out a, a spot. And now you, he might not ever see one uh, Deandre Carter, who was formerly with the Raiders, formerly with the chargers makes his way over to the bears. So uh, more of a return man than a receiver. Uh, but that in the end, that's it. Like you have yeah. your starting lineup that that's yep. pretty solid and looks exciting for Bears fans. But after that, eh? Yeah, basically, 
Yeah, I mean, it did, this is what you're looking at. This is the team right here. I mean, because, again, th those guys in the back, there's nobody really did here to talk about. The guys that have kind of um, – that are, uh, I guess, young for some, but then also you got, you know, like guys like Dante Pettis who've been around and just kicking around. So who knows? Just trying he's to been, barely make a team. So. I, how many teams has that guy been? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. So his time is gone. He's going to be one of those guys where they nobody wants him, and then he, all of a sudden he's going to come out. He's like, "Hey, Dante Pettis decided to retire." Like, ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Right. Yeah. No big deal. It's just because he was forced into it. Um. Uh, so when yeah, the receivers are pretty good. We like it. We're excited. But again, yeah. um, not a lot of depth, like you said. So right. a lot of people try to, uh take this team and say, Hey, this is what they got as weapons. Now, now is this the best receiving core, you know, in, you know, in the division or whatever, and this, and that <laughs> take it easy again, still too, because again, any moment here, one of these guys go down. Cause again, right. Keenan Allen known for, for injuries. Absolutely. So I mean, depending, you know, he is great. We get mm -hmm. that yeah. but injury, very injury prone. One other thing too, is like our bears fans really confident in their head coach, Matt Eberflus. Like this guy has made questionable decisions throughout last season, whether it be like a game time decision mm -hmm. or uh, a, a play that he wanted to run in certain situations. I don't know. I, I, I didn't put the stamp of approval when he got hired with Chicago. I was like, this is an odd hire. Like it, so to me, it surprised me. So he's got to do something this year. I think like, yeah, I, I understand that he has a rookie at, at quarterback and, and you got these, these new shiny toys to utilize, but I think you got to see something more than than just uh, yeah, a few wins, like seven, eight wins. So it's like I, I got to see more from this coaching staff. Hey, the ceiling is the roof, Joe. The ceiling is the roof. Uh, but a well lot of said, people, again, grasshopper. <laughs> A lot of people, though, again, it's funny when you when you look at this it, it, and now they've got, you know, Caleb Williams, a lot of people just jump on a bandwagon and try and say that Eberflus and this team is going to do so much better. Mm -hmm. and, and it's even him that he's one of the uh, who was it? Well, uh, oh, man, I can't remember one of these these dumb channels here and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and putting even Eberflus. I think somebody had even had him at like top two or top three head coaches in the NFL at this point. And I was wow. mind blown. I'm like, how do you really go from this to where they couldn't figure some things out last year? They were winning more. It seemed like with Tyler Badgett, uh, you right. know, yes. than they you yes. know, did anybody else, Justin yep. Fields and stuff. So, and they're just a, a disaster. So, I mean, I don't know where this came from. Yeah. But, and you know, it, they've got their work cut on this. They this definitely division, do. Though, Joe. And, and you bring up uh, Caleb Williams and Tyson Badgett. We'll get to them in a second, but, Offensive line-wise, that was another major concern for the Bears. Like, you know, how are they going to, you know, shore up this offensive line? Are they going to get – they had to improve it because if you're going to draft a, a rookie quarterback, you better be able to protect them. Uh, and and sure enough, like they did. They make their moves. You know, they, it seems like they they played a little bit of a, a matchmaker uh, moving Tevin Jenkins. Now it looks like he's going to play left guard. Braxton Jones still locking down the left tackle spot. Ryan Bates – from Buffalo is is penciled in as their starting center. And Nate Davis, pretty darn good offensive lineman over from Tennessee. He was there a year ago. Uh, Darnell Wright, who was their first round pick in 23 to lock up the right tackle spot, is just going to continue to get better. Mm -hmm. So it looks on paper anyways that it's a very solid offensive line, very capable of, of protecting and opening up uh, running running lanes. But uh Get to the quarter, or, or or then you go. I'm going to tie in the tight ends with the offensive lineman here. Yep. Um, everybody knows Cole Komet, how dominating he's starting to become as an NFL uh, tight end. But they also add a couple of old old goats here. Yeah, uh, J was J say Gerald that. Everett. They got, they got full of gold. J old Jared, Jared Everett and Mercedes Lewis. Like I am shocked that Mercedes Lu Mercedes Lewis, I think, is 40 years old. Yeah, and still playing him, yeah. in this league. Yep. Uh, and has. Everybody um, has alluded to the fact that like he's the people rate him as like the best blocking tight end still to this day, even with his age. So mm -hmm. uh, he adds tremendous value in terms of the blocking game. And Gerald Everett like is more of like that receiving threat. So mm -hmm. uh, Cole Komet, who can do both now, now you, you team him up with guys that specialize in certain areas. I think that's also going to help the offensive line and uh, the offensive attack. Yeah. Like you said, the blocking was right there so they can even move him you know around in some of these schemes here mm -hmm. and 
vets. That's what they did. They got Cole Komet there. He's still young, but they got these other vets here too. Gerald Everett too, that can still uh, contribute. Um, and again, to quarterbacks, you know, we'll see what happens with that. And we've talked about Caleb Williams a bunch of different times. Uh, everybody's high on uh, Brett Rippon, what he, what he did in the Hall of Fame game right now too. So uh, it's hey. kind of funny too, but that's what you do. You you put you your make stuff plays. out there to see what happens yeah. and, and see if uh, another team maybe likes you if they want to try and uh, move you or whatnot. Uh, but uh, DeAndre Swift, you know that was big here. This is where I thought Philadelphia kind of screwed up here. I was like, why you shell out the money to get you know Saquon Barkley? I kind of get it, you know, and you you steal you know your the the, the uh, you know running back from your your rival and stuff mm. like that. I get that too. But DeAndre Swift played amazing last season he probably would have been a hell of a lot cheaper uh to, to oh he definitely there, would have been cheaper keep there for a long time and he was very effective i thought that was strange how they were just willing to to move on and uh he finds a spot here in chicago so i kind of i really like this backfield here with khalil herbert and uh, deandre swift in the backfield joe yeah unfortunately for khalil he's always injured yeah, uh, he can't really last so mm-hmm. That that well, was the, that was to make, to be, and be the workhorse. Though. That That's was the I mean. reason why they pursued running back as a position to attack so so aggressively because they needed to get one. They needed to get someone that they know they could probably rely on and, and every down and what have. Swift is honestly probably one of the more underrated running backs in this league right now. Like the guy is tremendous. He can do everything extremely well. And why he ever got out of Detroit, I still don't understand. Because just imagine in a world with DeAndre Swift mm-hmm. and Jameer Gibbs mm-hmm, yeah. would be insane right now. But I digress. So here he is, Swift in Chicago, going to be a bear uh, this year with Herbert. I do like that one-two punch. And you're right, Jim. Like It's going to alleviate some of the the um, the tread on the tires for the season for both running backs. Mm-hmm. And don't forget Rashawn Johnson, too. Rashawn Johnson drafted in 23, uh, started to kind of come on as of late last season. And really kind of carved out a nice niche uh, in short yardage and goal line carries. So I look for him to kind of return to do the same thing. You're, you're going to see a multiple back uh, system here with Chicago. And it's going to pay off uh, big time for Chicago because it's going to help keep these guys healthy through the course of the season. For Caleb Williams at quarterback, you, you touched on uh, Rippon and, and Badgett. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chicago's darling in Tyson Badgett. Uh, Caleb Williams is now the new guy that they all love, and he hasn't even done anything on the football field yet. Uh, he's done things in practice, and yes, he's made some nice throws and what have you, but again, let's wait and see live action before we start to crown this this kid as, as being the next savior of another franchise here. Caleb Williams, he is limited. I'm curious to see if he works through all those things in training camp. So he can be ready for week one, because I'm telling you right now, week one might be a culture shock for Caleb when he's going to be facing a, de- a definitely a defense that's going to be hungry to get after him, to pressure him, to make him make mistakes and what have you. So I'm still waiting to see what Caleb can do because he ha- hasn't been able to play yet in live action. So maybe next week we'll see in a preseason game where they at least give him a series or two and might get a, a small dose of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we we touched on the defense real quick. Um, again, they were like a top 20 defense, you know, and Iberflu is supposed to be known for defense. One thing that did they did excel at was interceptions. They were first in the league in getting interceptions, and they were all over on that, which you win a turnover battle, that'd get you somewhere, you would think, but still the team only finished at seven and ten, uh, <laughs> not doing very well. And again, offense was the issue too, on top of it. So uh you know, they did eventually get Montez Sweat, which was a great addition for this great team. Addition. So that was a big team thing for them. So uh, they have some other additions on here, too. So, I mean, they did focus on the defense to try and get this team better on that side. and But mainly offense was the side of the ball they wanted to get better at. But we'll see in this tough division here on what kind of a difference they can make. I do like the fact that they brought in free agent Andrew Billings, who I think fits extremely well in this this defensive front line a nose tackle that can take on two blockers and still create pressure uh, at times whenever you need him to, and a guy who doesn't take much plays off. So um, I think that's going to pay off great uh, having him side by side with Montez Sweat. He's going to be able to take on the uh, the, the blockers where Montez Sweat is going to be free to be one-on-one most of the time. Uh, and then when you look at the linebackers, you know, st- studs, like, like 
you know, Tremaine Edmonds, yes, he's getting up there in age, but he still gets the job done, still gets everybody in position. TJ Edwards from Philadelphia. I was a huge fan of him in with the Eagles. And to see him go to the Bears is um he they just they had such a gaping hole at that position that it was like they went all in in free agency when when these guys were available they just went all in and they grabbed him got him into the got him into the facility and didn't let him out made him sign that contract and then when you look at their corner uh corners and their safeties just like you mentioned jim number one in in, in interceptions this is a team right now that they have some youth too installed in t- uh tyreek stevenson who's up and coming from the draft in 23, Jaquan Brisker, who's making a name for himself. He also was taken in 22. Uh, Kevin Byard was the interesting addition for me. Yeah, uh, Had one year in Philly. They didn't really look to resign him. He ends up going to free agency. He, 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 go, he goes to Chicago. And here's mm-hmm. Chicago, who, who was in need of, of, a, of a safety because they decided to move on from Eddie Jackson. So it's like a revolving door of safeties going from different teams. Uh, Bayard lands here along with Jalen Johnson and Kyler Gordon. This secondary right now, if Tyreek Stevenson can live up to the hype uh, out of training camp, this secondary is going to be very, very difficult to deal Mm -hmm. with for any offense, uh, let alone their whole entire defense. So I, I fully expect the defense to hold it down just like they did a season ago. But now... If you if Caleb Williams can answer the call and deliver the football to his weapons in in order, w- reading the defenses, making the right calls at the line, I think that you're going to see not only a much improved offense, but now a team that is ready to win, maybe possibly get into the nine or ten win range. Yeah, definitely. So we're excited to see what happens with the Chicago Bears uh, next. Moving on in the NFC North, we have the Detroit Lions. Lions so close to getting to the Super Bowl last season. And just, uh, again, oh we're talking God. about squander another lead, too, on top of it. Uh, it seems Terrible. like, you know, the 49ers took a page right out of the, the, the playbook of the, uh, the the Lions here. And mm-hmm. it was tough to watch it because, again, on the receivers uh, show, to watch it all over again. And then from the, the point of view <laughs> from those guys, Brown. Ron Rossi yeah. Brown and all that. And then to hear how they're talking on the sidelines and then then it has it all unfolds. And it was just tough. Uh, but again, you talk about Amon Ross St. Brown. This kid is amazing. And too, by watching the show, you see the amount of work that he puts in uh, and how, how he has done it his whole life. It's pretty amazing, that whole family. Uh, but again, great receivers here. James, James Williams, too. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. You got Raymond here now is penciled in as a start as a starter. And you've even got some pretty good depth here, uh, you know, with some other players like Donovan Peoples-Jones and stuff. But this team, again, wasn't expected to, uh, I guess, make it as far as they did two seasons ago. They were everybody's kind of favorite, like Dark Horse last season. I think this season, after getting so far and so close as they did and feeling that they just let each other down, uh, I think you're going to go and give it another run. And I think this group here is a really group, big group. Uh, a good group to 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 r- try and run it back here. Well, this this team is was ready to win last year. Mm-hmm. Like so, it's not going to be a surprise for them to make another push this year to win the division to possibly go deep into the playoffs. So, like that that to me isn't going to surprise me anyway. But when it comes to receivers, what might surprise a lot of people is Jamison Williams because he really hasn't shown what he can truly do yet yes. since he's been drafted in twenty two. This is a guy coming at it from Alabama, was a speedster, was a difference maker for the the Crimson Tide, and still hasn't been able to show, hasn't been able to start even. He's been in the rotation as of last season, showed some flashes here and there that he could could, uh, attack deep down the field and and score touchdowns, but hasn't been able to put it all consistently all together and and start Mm full-time. This year... Out of training camp, they're saying he's a completely different type of player now. He is ready to take the reins. He's ready to start and become that playmaking wide receiver that they envisioned him to be. So they already have one. They already got him on Ross St. Brown. Mm -hmm. He's definitely the difference maker there. But now you, if you're able to get the uh, close to the same thing out of of Jamison Williams, now you're talking a whole new ball game. Now, now you're talking to where you have two legit wide receivers that are going to be difficult to deal with week in and week out. Khalif Raymond, I'm not thrilled about. The guy's a journeyman wide receiver. The only reason why he's penciled in as a starter is because 
he's the best out of the worst that they got. Yeah. So um, that to me, they could get a little stronger. Like I feel like they could assign maybe a Tyler Boyd this year mm-hmm. because they are going to be making a push. Why not have mm-hmm. like a veteran wide receiver come in that's been there, done that, and can still get it done? But you know, whatever. Uh, and that's it for the wide receivers. I mean, offensive line wise. Uh, this is the craziest thing. Detroit was everybody was like kind of worried about um Panay Sewell. Are they mm-hmm. gonna extend them? Mm-hmm. Tyler Decker with his deal was getting close to the end. And they just said, you know what? We're gonna sign every dude that we just want to lock up. Where they didn't even waste time. Yeah. Yep. You know, Monroe's gonna be there for quite some time. Taylor Decker just got an extension. Panay Sewell got an extension. It's like everybody uh that they really wanted to stay, they just locked up this year. Mm-hmm. Unlike other teams that are just kind of letting drag out. We're not going to say names, mm. but uh, this is a team that's, you know, all business. They, they they just want everybody to come to work. Don't worry about contracts. We got you. And, and let's try to and let's try to win a championship because that's the main goal. So mm. offensive line wise, they're 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 they're, they're tight. They're stacked, uh, whatever term you want to use. But they are solid as hell. And and when they had a, a, a hole at right guard, I was- they brought in Kevin Zeitler. The, the guy that's been there, done that for the Ravens. Now he's going to be able to lock it up for the Detroit Lions. So I, I'm thrilled with what they did, especially with the offensive line, locking up guys that they don't want to lose. And they're ready for another season. Yeah, I think maybe that's their weakness, though, here is, is Zeitler here at the guard situation there. Um, I don't think he played very well when he was with even the, with the Giants and he played for Baltimore for a little bit, but you know, he's not there now. So obviously that's an issue. Uh, so they, they filled what they could right there. So I think that's maybe their one b- bad spot out of this really good offensive line though. So if that's the, the issue I've seen other guys, you know, too that played poorly for a team happen to step up and play better when you got other guys around them too, as well. Well, that's what's going to um, probably happen with this. Cause he has better linemen around Jameson him. Winston or Jameson uh, Williams quick. Uh, it's funny because drafted uh, first round 2022, we're coming up on this next season uh, next year that we're going to take a look at that. And right now he could potentially be that a bust right now because like you said, uh, he hasn't really done what he was kind of expected to do. And mainly because of injuries. His first year, he n- he never stepped foot on yeah, the field because right? he was already injured yes. in college. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a year you throw out. Mm-hmm. You can't even evaluate him for that. So re- realistically, this is his second year. That that's really what you can only base it off of. So I mean, that the that first year you just just scrapped that because he he wasn't going to play anyway. Well, we've put it in there when we were talking about it before with other players too. If you're always injured, you know that's that's part of the issue too. So true, but exactly that was a different that, situation. Um, but well, I mean, everybody has their own different situation. And then you, you know, have Christian they, Mahogany who got drafted. He's still not able to practice, which is a little concerning because they're hoping that maybe Mahogany could probably try to at least win the job from Kevin Zeitler. But uh, honestly, if you're missing time Mm -hmm. at this point as a young player, you're already behind the eight ball. You're going to have to earn your reps. You're going to have to earn your stripes, so to speak, to to even have a, even be in contention now, because now we're getting, we're approaching the first week of, of uh, training camp or for a preseason anyway. And if this is to linger on, you're going to be so far behind. There's no, probably no chance you're going to get to start unless Zeitler happens to get injured. Mm -hmm. And at tight end, you've got Sam LaPorta there again. I really stepped up last season too. been uh, a big target for uh, Jerry Goff. And like we've said time and time again, you know, a a quarterback's best friend is a good tight end right there. And and these guys, uh, young tight ends in in the NFL right now, if you look at the tight ends that are really performing for many teams, it's not just, you know, you're, you know, Travis Kelsey and things like that. These other younger guys are being a big part of their teams. And one of these guys is Sam Laporta. Uh, so you expect him to do much of the same this upcoming season as well. Yeah, I, I expect him to do more, honestly, because he is going to be healthy now. You know, that was a thing too later on down the season. Still played and was able to to make some big time plays, but he was playing awfully injured and hurt and, and still trying to make it happen. So uh, look for Sam LaPorta to be even more impressive this year, as well as don't forget Brock Wright. Brock Wright, his backup, he actually comes in. Everybody kind of seems to like, oh, who's this guy? And, it, and he catches 10 yards at a rip. So uh, I think this is a, it's a nice tight end group that they have. And Sam LaPorta is obviously the uh, the pinnacle uh, of that, that position group. But 
uh, nonetheless, it's it's going to be a group that's going to continue to produce. Mm -hmm. And move back to the uh, move to the uh, quarterback position here. Jared Goff again, that underdog. You, you saw it even um, in the locker room, you know, talks when when he did win against the his old team in the Los Angeles Rams. They said Jared Goff, hey, he's good enough for us. He's good enough for Detroit and all this other stuff. So that really carried, and this is what this team really kind of goes behind. We've seen like the Philadelphia trying to pull like the whole underdog type of thing and stuff like that, uh, disrespect all the time. And I think um, the, the 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 Lions can really kind of ride along with that too, just because even the franchise has been so bad for so long. Uh, and now you've got this quarterback here that made it to the Super Bowl with another team. And then that team felt like he wasn't good enough to get him back there and win it again. So they traded him for the quarterback you, your, your franchise just had, you know? So, I mean, it's an interesting story altogether and how it's all come together. Uh, Jared Goff looking to do a, another great season here, very minimal turnovers. Uh, but I am worried that too, if he ends up uh, getting banged up a little bit too, you don't have a lot behind him. So if you, he does go down, it could be one of those, um, you know, really crushing defeats here. Uh, for this team that is playoff Super Bowl bound. Well, the interesting thing of this quarterback room is if Goff goes down, who exactly is going to start? Because Hendon Hooker was a high pick in the third round in 23. He got injured in college, and his his type of injury was going to take a long time to heal. But a lot of people said that if Hendon Hooker came out fully healthy, was going to be the number one quarterback taken. So if he has that much talent and he's been grooming behind Jared Goff, what's to say that, that maybe Hendon hooker is now not only a hundred percent healthy, but now is ready to maybe possibly help out if need be. So uh, maybe it's not as dark as we want to believe because we haven't seen hooker play. We, you know, he hasn't been able to be on the, on the football field and, and show what he can exactly do. Hopefully we get to see that in, in uh, preseason games because this year would be the year where he can show some things off. So I'm curious to watch that. Uh, and as far as golf, he's been lucky or at least he's, I don't know what kind of regiment he does in the off season, but he's stayed pretty darn healthy throughout his career thus far. So I know with the, the protection in front of him and with golf himself, like, I, I don't think they have too many concerns there. Uh, so I, I definitely think that they're in for the long haul. All right. And the running back position, again, we, we, we know these guys here, David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, outstanding, uh, playing well all throughout the season. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, I think, is big on a lot of people's uh, fantasy list this upcoming season too, so. as well. Uh, so this offense, I think, is going to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, it's the defense, for me, that really needs to step up. Yes, they've gotten a lot of pressures and things like that, too, but they are 29th in the red zone. And again, if you look at yardage and, and touchdowns that they've given up, they're right at the tail end, almost last two as well. Uh, so all those pressures, they like yeah, Dan Campbell's even said, oh, pressures are as good as sacks or something, this and this. Obviously not, because, you know, when these teams are scoring on you still like they are, it, it wasn't enough. And I always look at it as if you get a sack still, that's an absolute next down. You know what I mean? So a hurry might make a, a quarterback, you know, throw off or this and that, but there's so many good quarterbacks right now that deal with pressure or scramble out of pressure that could throw on the run. A lot of that really doesn't make any difference. So I think this defense really needs to step up this season. It, it matters a little bit. Like pressure, pressure does affect quarterbacks. Does. And that's why you see them, I get even that. though they can throw on the run and the, and you get but. pressure on them, they, they do tend to make mistakes or at least they throw it out of bounds. Uh, so that, cause they're not going to be as accurate, but, uh, I will say this, that th this defense is a little bit different than last season. So like stats really don't tell this whole story in terms of coming into this year. We have to reevaluate now. Last season was last season. This season is going to be different. You had a lot of guys injured too that that'll affect that, the, the rankings there and everything. So now that they're a hundred percent healthy coming back into this, have another stud corner on the opposite side with Terry and Arnold finally have an answer there. You know, mm -hmm. Carlton Davis playing left. Now you got Terry and Arnold playing right. You got Brian Branch finally healthy again. Like this guy, if this yeah. guy can stay healthy this year, he, you're going to see him make so many plays. And, and I know Lions fans are hoping for that this season because the guy is just a playmaker at safety. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like to see him full time throughout the whole season to see him be able to make an impact for this defense. 
along with guys like especially up in the, in the front four you mm-hmm. got a new guy by the name of dj reader mm-hmm. kind of he's like 30 was it i think he's like 31 32 years old uh, of a d tackle from the Bengals. guys mm-hmm. been there done that he's proven himself let's see if he can do it for another year um marcus davenport's also a new addition yep. to yep. defensive pass rusher to go on the opposite side of aiden hutchinson so overall I think what they did is they didn't try to do too much and and change too much personnel. They just added to it via draft and a couple free agents. So I think that they're in a very good place. I feel like they're a very solid defense too. And and I think you're going to see that offense work extremely well with the defense in unison, and they're going to be able to make big strides this year. Yeah, absolutely. Again, and Anzalone, you know, some of these players, Jack Campbell, I mean, they were stepping up too a lot of times. And, and the thing is, Detroit, when we looked at them, uh, th- I think the difference between the season before and last season between primetime games was astronomical. All of a sudden, they got a ton of primetime games. So a lot of these when guys, win, people didn't know, that. and now they're becoming names out there. So, uh, again, these guys, hopefully they step up here and can make some more plays. And, and uh, the Detroit Lions, again, they're one of those hot up-and-coming teams and this uh, NFC North is one of those divisions that everybody is really looking at and really looking to see how many of these teams come out as playoff teams. Isn't it funny how if you win more games the very next season, you get more primetime games in a sense, you know, that's basically uh, what it is. Cause it's all about, it's all about putting the best product on there, but then the NFL also still screws that up and gives us some like really Debbie downer type games in primetime too. Yeah, sometimes it's just who you have. You know, I mean, how many did, did the Jets get a bunch of primetime games to expecting that they were going to have yes. Aaron Rodgers? And you know then Rodgers I mean? got and, hurt, and it didn't, it didn't really pan out for him. Um, but there was but, there was even a, quite a few, and there was a lot of people complaining about it. Yeah. There was you know a, a quite a few games last year that were primetime games, and you're like, what is this? This is not even a game because they both suck. Yeah, like it, like it didn't make sense at all. <laughs> People were complaining about it last year, so I'm just waiting to see what happens this year. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, definitely. All right. So next, uh, now moving on in the NFC North, we've got the Minnesota Vikings. No. Oh, we're going Vikings. Vikings. Now. Yes, okay. we're going to do the Vikings. Interesting. Yes. Okay, so Vikings, uh, the big story with them, you know, they don't have the same quarterback anymore. They have a rookie quarterback now on top of it. Uh, So no more Kirk Cousins and stuff. And that was kind of what derailed their season uh, last season. You know, Justin Jefferson finally, you know, we we saw it in the receiving show too. Never really got injured in his career, and then all of a sudden twice in a season uh, really wanted to be there for his team. And you saw the difference when he wasn't there. And then when he did come back after the first time, uh, you know, Kirk Cousins goes down and, and it was just a, you know, shambles after that and stuff and couldn't really bounce back. Uh, so Kevin O'Connell now trying to kind of reset here. He's got his quarterback now too uh, and trying to groom him. And let's see moving forward because, again, you got Sam Darnold there. They're talking about the quarterback controversy. I'm excited to see the preseason game, see what lies of that and who that potential starter could be. But the the Minnesota Vikings, with having that down year, and you've got the 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 Lions that are good, the the Bears potentially could be better. The Green Bay Packers were they were amazing last year too. Tough to really get back into this division. Yeah, I mean the Vikings, they have a plan in place. Obviously, like they drafted JJ McCarthy, hoping that he could be their future quarterback, but maybe not necessarily this year, because. Everybody's saying how well Sam Darnold's playing right now, uh, whether it be an 11 on 11 drills, seven on seven drills. He's been able to distribute the rock to everybody that is in need and is doing such a good job. Kevin, Kevin O'Connell is impressed with him at this point, N- not only how he came in as a, as a veteran, but also how he was able to learn the playbook really quickly and is now starting to become a real big part of this offense in distributing the football to his receiver. So, I, I think that Kevin O'Connell and the Vikings actually feel a little bit more confident than most people, even Vikings fans uh, in Sam Darnold. So we, we kind of uh, put it out there and I made the claim of like saying Sam Darnold's going to be the starter, everybody. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, no way is he going to be the starter. They drafted JJ. He's going to be the starter. Well, JJ McCarthy is, is a backup right now. And Sam Darnold, they, they love what he's able to do. So Sam Darnold's starting right now. And, 
let's just see how how it plays out because maybe this is the the opportunity that Darnold needed with it, with the, a very different offensive philosophy with Kevin O'Connell and a completely different environment. So, and it does help that you got Justin Jefferson to throw to, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, and Jordan Addison. That's if he can stay out of trouble, of course. Uh, yeah, but I know. Right? But nonetheless, uh, uh. The, after those two guys, though, you, you look at this team in mm-hmm. terms of their receiving power, and it's it's lackluster. Mm-hmm. Like th- they didn't even really add any vets. They didn't, and they still can, but. It's like Jalen Naylor is going to be penciled in the, in the slot at this at this point in time, and I I think he's an up and coming type of wide receiver. So I'm curious to see just how good he actually is. Uh, but you got Brandon Powell, who who was w- with the Rams formerly, who mm-hmm. could probably maybe car- carve out a nice niche in the rotation. Um, after that, uh, obviously it, it's a bunch of guys playing for spots. Yeah, but if Naylor can come out and prove that he is a legit up and coming player and a starter for them, then that's great. Uh, Brandon Powell, he's going to be part of this rotation. Maybe it's with Naylor, uh, but the, your two guys are, are obviously Jefferson and Addison. But yep. the yep. thing is, is let's just say, for example, we saw last year, Jefferson went down with an injury, couldn't play in several games. Addison it has also been known in college to come down with the injury bug here and there. Mm-hmm. If both of these guys happen to go down, it, you're looking it's at a, a very big yes. issue here. Yes. So especially offensively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, again, that's the key here too. It, it, that's, that's, that's the whole part of it. So this team, I'm not expecting a whole lot of things here because again, you, you're, you're kind of changing quarterbacks. You got, you know, the veteran there, and Sam Darnold and then, you know, JJ McCarthy would see what he can do if he can be able to challenge for that starting spot or not. And like you said, the, the, the depth, you know, if you don't, if Jordan Addison still gets in, in, in more trouble or, or, or whatnot, you, you, you're left with Justin Jefferson again, which he's shown that he can kind of, if you just have him, uh, you keep feeding him the ball. He, he's a, just a difference maker. I get that. But still, you know, there's times when you, when you're, he's getting doubled up and he's seen where he's gotten frustrated and banged up. Because people, again, see what kind of a difference maker he can be, so they get really physical with him. And I think that's why he got injured a bit last last year. Uh, that's going to be a focus that a lot of teams are going to focus on. Luckily mm-hmm. for them, though, they did go and get Aaron Jones, so I think this running game is going to be pretty good, too. So I think they're going to have Aaron Jones do a lot of the workload, too, to balance it out a little bit. So maybe they don't have to go all air with Justin Jefferson. And that's the other thing, too, about Addison is we haven't heard yet the NFL come down with a suspension. That's right. Uh, it could be three game suspension. So you're looking at the first three weeks of football, not having one of your major weapons. And that could really hinder this offense too. Uh, maybe it doesn't, maybe it does, but it, it's, it's not a, not a good look for, for the team. And, and it's definitely not going to be a good look for the offense uh, going, starting the season. All right. We got William Del Pilar. He says, Sam Donald is going to have his best career ever. There you go. That he's, won't be hard to do. The mic. There you go. Because he seems to get ripped out of the starting spot <laughs> as soon as, uh, you know, <laughs> things go awry. Uh, but this guy's definitely got a great opportunity here. I think he is going to do well for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, like it's going to ma- it's going to depend on the availability of the receivers. It's going to depend on even on the offensive line here. Uh, you got a, a, there's a few guys on here that kind of got question marks. Like Brian O'Neill's been pretty darn good locking up the right tackle spot. Uh, Blake Br- Brandle, I, I don't know much about him at left guard. Uh, hopefully he's, I, I, I think he's a veteran that's been there. But again, some of these guys, you just don't hear their names at all. And, and you kind of wonder, like Ed Ingram at right guard. Like, I don't know those offensive linemen too well right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Christian Derisaw, he just got a big time extension. Yeah, and and obviously you got your bookend tackle set. You got your safety or your safety, your center yep. set at Garrett mm-hmm. Bradbury. Mm-hmm. So there's some at least there's pillars that fill out that offensive line where even if the left guard and right guard can't play up to par, that they're still going to be able to hold it down enough. And we talked about Sam Darnold. We took we're, we're going to talk about the running backs here. Aaron Jones is now a Viking, everyone. I didn't think this was going to happen. I I still think this is going to be odd to watch because Aaron Jones to me is is just a Packer through and through. He he should have retired a Packer, uh, but here he is. Uh, Packers didn't want him. They they decided to replace him instead. Uh, and Aaron Jones is is going to be a Viking. He's going to look 
to try to get revenge against the Packers whenever they face each other. Uh, and Ty Chandler uh, as your backup. So I, I've I struggled with this because in Kevin O'Connell's offense, I think Jones can work well inside this offense, but it's going to be something similar to Green Bay, but at the same time, it is a little bit different. I just hope that they don't utilize him too much because he is up there in age. I think you're going to have to bounce it out between him and Ty Chandler uh, in terms of, of reps and everything on the football field, but he's still a good player. There's no doubt about it. So mm -hmm. they don't lose much in terms of, in terms of uh, getting productivity in that, in that spot. So I think they'll, they'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now last year uh, the defense uh, was doing pretty good, but now this year they've got even, a lot of different players on his team, you know, because uh, one, you did lose pass rusher Daniel Hunter. Finally, mm -hmm. he's gone because after all the, the, the debate with his contract and all this other stuff, he's finally out, uh, moved on to probably better things here and a better career. Uh, so that's going to be tough uh, not, you know, having him there. Uh, they do fill a couple of different spots here. You know, they got Harrison Phillips and uh, Andrew Van Kinkle from Miami Dolphins and things. Uh, Byron Murphy found, finds a spot here. And you've still got your traditional guys here in Harrison Smith, who just doesn't age, apparently. He's just still there at the safety position. Uh, but this defense, a little different look to him right now this season. Yeah, you got Brian Flores as the D coordinator, changing things up a little bit here, going to a 3-4 scheme. And that's where you see that linebacking position loaded up now. You know, Jonathan Grinard coming over from Houston, Blake Cashman, who's been there. Mm -hmm. um, Ivan Pace Jr., who was a pleasant uh, surprise for them, a undrafted free agent who managed to not only make the, the starting lineup, but has been holding on to it with very strong grip. Uh, Andrew Van Grink, uh, Ginkle, Van Ginkle, like you mentioned, yeah. a phenomenal pass rusher. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want him to get a little bit better playing the run. Mm -hmm. uh, but so we'll see that all happen when, when they step on the football field. But I will say that there is a ton of changes in terms of personnel for this Vikings defense. And it has changed a little bit. So I'm curious to see how it all works together. Especially their, with their draft pick, Joe. Their front three. Uh, their front three here, they are all good. They're, they're the, the down three linemen. They're just going to eat up blocks, you mm -hmm. know, so that's why you see such big, large men up front. So it's going to be curious to see. And you mentioned the, the, the rookie that they drafted and Dallas Turner mm -hmm. didn't think he would fit a um, didn't think he would fit the, the prototypical defensive end position, in my opinion, anyways, that. I thought he, with his athletic ability and his speed and sideline to sideline type of movement, we saw him do some coverage drills in Alabama before he got drafted. And I was like, dude, that's a linebacker all day. That's an outside linebacker that I could wreak havoc at the NFL level. And sure enough, it looks like anyways that the Vikings drafted him to purposely put him there. So Andrew Van Ginkle, watch out. You might be a backup soon mm -hmm. uh, because Dallas Turner is clipping at your heels right now to get more playing time. I really do. I really like this kid as an outside linebacker, especially coming off the edge. He's going to make a big time impact. Again, he still has to learn the defense. We got to see if he can be able to can kind of maybe steal some reps or, or steal that position away from Ginkle. But uh, I do like the fact that they are going to use him as a linebacker, not so much at the end in this defense. I think that's huge. Secondary wise, Byron Murphy Jr. Comes over from the Cardinals. Now we talked mm -hmm. about how many different yeah, changes yeah, were made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just keeps continuing yeah. throughout the whole yeah. defense. Yeah. Uh, you got yeah. Byron Murphy, Harrison Smith. Vikings fans know him very well. Yeah. He's been yeah. there forever. Uh, Cameron Bynum. He's also been there since 21. Shaq Griffin's a new addition to play mm -hmm. corner uh, on the right side. And then it looks like Joshua mm -hmm. Metellus is going to lock down the nickel spot as of right now. But again, they're like you said early on, Jim, there are so many personnel changes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very difficult to all gel together right away. Mm -hmm. So these guys got to play. They got to get as many reps as they possibly can. So then when week one comes around, they won't look like a disorganized machine. Right. So Brian Flores going to get them all, get his ducks lined up in a row. And hopefully when week one kicks off, mm -hmm. they're going to be ready. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. All right. Finally, moving on here as we cover the NFC North, it is the Green Bay 
Packers here, Joe. And again, we brought them up a little bit earlier and the amazing run that they had uh, last season. Enough so that little flash in the pan that we did see uh, of their quarterback gets them the highest paid in the NFL. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was, was, was crazy because uh, we talked about the contract and, and, and we were saying, all right, it's kind of funny because it's like, uh, I think we even talked about with Brian Noah a little bit too, with the fact that, hey, you only got to see a little bit. It's like going out on one date and then all of a sudden, hey, propose, you're here, let's get married. Uh, whoa, you know what I mean? And I get it. You know, you, you got to want to try and lock them up, you know, for long term. Maybe yeah. the rate was good right mm -hmm. now because you never know what you might pay later down the road. Right. Uh, but it's just for the Packers. I hope it is what it is for them, you know, and, and, and they can get it done here and uh you know while the, these other uh you know weapons that they have here are still under you know a smaller contract and it's just funny too because i think it was evan cohen for um unsportsman like all right mm -hmm. now let's see what you think about this take he said he was all on right. another podcast and he said if you put green if you put um jordan love and aaron Rodgers, he's taking jordan love all day because he's a better player than aaron Rodgers. Do you agree that Jordan Love is a better player than Aaron Rodgers? No. Yeah, I didn't think so either. You're, you're comparing to the other guys. But here's the thing is you're comparing a veteran that's done everything, has won a champ, has won championships, yeah. has had an illustrious career, has, has is a Hall of Famer. He's a future Hall of Famer, a shoe-in. Mm -hmm. And you're comparing him right now to Jordan Love, who's yes. only had one season of productivity. Mm -hmm. No. That, yeah. That's ridiculous, which I get because even because even they were like, all right, hold on a second. Do you mean even just the way he's playing now? Because Aaron Rodgers is older. Wait, are we talking like about Aaron Rodgers last stuff year? Like that. <laughs> and like you're because he goes, and if you're still you're asking me, you're like, are you seriously saying that Jordan Love is a better quarterback than Aaron Rodgers? And he said, well, is he not? And I'm like, wow, it's just hot takes everywhere, uh, which I think was a, a bit preposterous a little, a little ridiculous so yeah i'm glad that we kind of agree on that one i'm sure a lot of other people do on top of it jim so. we got news what's up just as fast as we reported it is as fast as it's shut closed all right uh the patriots are no longer interested no longer in trading for brandon Ayuk. it's an official statement yeah and uh comes from adam schefter uh it is official guys sorry patriots fans that's not going to happen mm -hmm. there you go it's all fake news <laughs> it's phony stuff uh, it didn't happen Yep. Uh, so the Patriots are out. So who knows? Maybe then. So now um, you're looking at the, the who else? Uh, Did they say somebody else besides the Browns and stuff out there? Well, so, well, so far that the Browns are are talking, right? Like they're in the hunt. What's interesting is that you have teams like maybe the Steelers that might entertain this because imagine coupling George Pickens with Brandon Ayuk mm. with maybe Russell Wilson if he yep. is going to be the starter because yep. we know that there's a little bit of a. Uh, little bit of a rustling of the feathers there with Justin Fields now getting first team reps uh, recently because Russell Wilson had a slight injury. Yep. Um, but that it, it's going to be interesting because there's also teams that have called way ahead. Uh, it's called San Fran. The Raiders actually were in a phone conversation with them, possibly maybe thinking about getting out of uh, Devontae Adams's contract and sending him to San Fran in hopes of getting Ayuk. So, Nothing is ironclad. It's all speculation at this point, uh, just like the, the Patriots thing. Maybe mm -hmm. that was all speculation and people kind of ran with it like that was what was being reported. And then the Patriots all of a sudden changed their minds and say, no, nah, let's just put a stop to this. We're not doing it. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to wait and see how this progresses. But in, in the coming week, I definitely think you're going to hear about more teams being involved. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? That's interesting stuff. All right, so moving on with the Green Bay Packers. The Cheese Packers. There Got they are. Uh, wide receiving core, uh, still the same guys there, at least for your starters. Um, and Can this is what I was tell telling you about. Like These guys this is a team better, but just on those rookie contracts. So you want to keep them together. Talk about the receiving core. Mm -hmm. This is a team that did extremely well in adding multiple talented yeah. wide receivers. Yeah. And guys that have all played – like Dontavion Wicks, mm -hmm. who came on late last season, was was like a phenom last mm -hmm. year because of injuries to Romeo Dobbs, to uh, Jaden Reed even got beat up. Christian Watson came in late. So like you have all these guys that are all going to be competing against each other for reps to get out there in a rotation. And then you also have guys like Bo Melton, 
who, who's looking to carve out a spot on the roster, who's looking. Uh, I think that they've done a great job of adding not just talented players, but guys that are going to be able to um, to contribute this season and do it at a high level. We've already seen evidence of it last year with this receiving core. They're going to continue to do that this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you on that one. I mean, it does... I'm a, I'm sorry, but I'm a mm -hmm. huge Jane Reed fan. Mm -hmm. I think this dude is yeah. amazing. Like he's going to be better than Christian Watson. Yeah. Oh, well, like, yeah. I think so like, too, as well. You saw some of that he, last year. And Dontavian Wicks, I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up getting a starting job before week one. I'm just saying, like I'm putting it out there because the competition is very thin right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Why don't you talk about the offensive line here? What we got here? What, what they, I know they drafted uh, Jordan Morgan in mm -hmm. the first round here this yeah. season, uh, but the offensive line it's new too because uh, you know a guy's finally aged out. Joe, you know Runyon now is with the the Giants, and mm -hmm. you know the, the Bakhtiari's done. You He's know, still so, looking for a team. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, the, this is the first time we've seen now of, of, of this many new faces it's, here uh, for the Packers. And we we talked about it before about how young this roster is. Their offensive line is no longer aged. Yes. It's very young, and all of these guys have been with Green Bay. It's not like they're new this year besides Jordan Morgan. He's the only one that just got drafted in the first round. But everybody else has been young, has been developing in Green Bay, and now they're ready to take the torch. They're ready to be starters. Uh, Zach Tom, uh, Josh Myers, these guys aren't household names yet for offensive linemen, but the, I assure you they're going to be. Rashid Walker at left tackle. Elton Jenkins, to me, is one of my favorite offensive linemen that Green Bay has. I think he's amazing because he can play any position besides center, but he can play any position and does it at a, at a high level. So I got a lot of confidence in their youth movement that they've put together with the receivers, with the offensive line. They lock up Jordan Love, who's still in his prime. Like, mm -hmm. And then to top it all off, running backs. A.J. Dillon was a free agent. He ends up coming back and teaming him up with Josh yes, Jacobs, one of the best running backs in football. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. A guy who's also another guy in his prime who's young. This whole offense is not only just young, what? but is ready to, to take over. Like we've seen them what they could do last year. If they all put it together and they all stay healthy. I I'm sorry. This offense yeah. could be electric. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the thing where I'm at the point now when you're looking at the team, since they moved on with Rodgers and all this here, the youth now that they have moving on from the older guys in the offensive line and how they played. I was one of the guys that was against Matt LaFleur when he got this starting, when he got this coaching job. Uh, now I'm looking at this and I'm like, how much of it is him designing this team or is it all good good to or are they just a perfect match here together and developing these guys and getting this team together because it has been amazing to watch. Yes. And you know what? It's exactly that, what you just said. It's Gutekunst and LaFleur because it never goes just the GM anymore. It used to be. Back in the day, the GMs ran the team. They they drafted who they, who they felt with the scouts and all that. Head coaches had some say, but really not as much as they do now. So now you're seeing partnerships developing. You got Gutekunst and LaFleur, and, and, and LaFleur is an offensive-minded guy. So you see the, the team and how it's molded in his vision with the help of Gutekunst, and you're looking at a very deadly young team that can last a long time now. They are prepared to, to, to take it to the next five, ten years. So watch out, everybody. Like Green Bay is back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And with the addition of Josh Jacobs, I think that's with AJ Dillon. I mean, they didn't miss that's a step by losing Aaron Jones. That, I'm like, are you kidding isn't, me? Isn't, oh, isn't that this like is nasty? Is uh, the the teams in the division like they they watching the free agent wire and everything, and all of a sudden yeah. it comes up on there. Green Bay Packers sign Josh Jacobs and AJ Dillon back, and they're like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, <laughs> I give up. Like, what are we supposed to do against that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And again, now you look at the de defensive side. Uh, what can you say? But I mean, this team has been pretty amazing on defense too. I mean, guys just making plays uh, all over. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, With in front, that front, you know, that front four or five, even too. I mean, just making plays all day. There's there's a couple of guys that that need to to 
not just that I don't think step up is the term, but they just need to stay healthy. Rashawn Gary. Yeah. yeah. Rashawn Gary to me it has been injured too often since he's been drafted in 2019. And, and yes, he's, he went through a, a slight positional change was a D end at Michigan. They t- transformed his body. And now is more of a, a left outside linebacker coming off the edge. And I want to see him full time. I want to see him out there. I know Packers fans have been dying to see him out there because he's a difference maker for them on defense. Oh, big time. And then you got Lucas Van S, who they drafted in 23 in the first round. This is a guy, dude, you got to step up. You got to you got to make a push for Preston Smith. You got to beat Preston Smith out mm-hmm. to get on the football mm-hmm. field now. Mm-hmm. They they apparently they don't have that much confidence in you. Like you you're, you're going to have to prove to them like, "Hey, no, you drafted me in the first round. I deserve to play." And show them this year. You need to be a difference maker. Kenny Clark just got a big time extension yep. to lock him up there. Uh, I, I do like the kid, uh, Devontae Wyatt. Mm-hmm. Watch out for him in yeah. rotation. I think yep. he's going to be a, a problem for some people. And then when you look at linebackers, still solid. Mm-hmm. Just they, they, they have a solid and they're doing. You're seeing this a lot now with the defensive schemes is whether it be three, four or four, three. You're seeing these two linebacker formations where there's yep. only two out there. There's not three anymore. They're not that traditional four three. Uh, and it's interesting because now you're allowed to either put on an extra D- down lineman or you put out another extra defensive back. And it's interesting what people are doing because of this pass happy attack that the NFL is right now. Yeah. You have more coverage guys out there. Yeah, so. absolutely. And like you said, when they spell the guys in too, they're making some plays. You, you said Devontae Wyatt, Van Ness, these guys were doing some stuff just while they were sprinkled in. And Kenny Clark, again, he had like 7.5 sacks, I think. Rashawn Gary, even just despite, you know, having uh, started 13 games, mm-hmm. uh, I think was like their sack leader with nine or so. Uh, these guys making plays all together. And like I said, when this defense was doing good and with this, this linebacking core, you right. got – Jair Alexander in the back holding it down there. They, you know, and they bring in Xavier McKinney in the the outfield here. We on who was pretty much for me as a Giants fan looked like the only defensive player playing last year. A lot of times, you know, just making plays <laughs> all over the ball. You know, interceptions here and there and this and that. So that was a highlight, and I was sad to see him go. But I'm sure you were but feeling good for him though too that he's on a team like this that was really going places. So that's a great addition for them. Yeah, it is a great addition for them, and they team him up with uh, Javon Bullard, who was drafted this year in the second round. They really believe in this kid. They think that he can come in, and they don't skip a beat at that safety position. Uh, teaming him up with McKinney, this is a, a very smart move, I feel like, because you have a young, young up-and-coming safety coming into the league. But you team him up with McKinney, who can teach him the different ways as a veteran of this league, how to prepare, how to, what to look for when you're when you're playing his position. So you got him, Jair Alexander, still there, even though there was a ton of rumors out there that Alexander wanted out. He wanted to be traded from Green Bay, wanted the big payday, and 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 uh, and that. But they resolved all that. Like it's it's all set. Uh, Keyshawn Nixon is now going to lock into that nickel corner position. He's no longer just a special teams threat. Now he's going to be playing that nickel corner, and that's what fits him to a T. So Mm -hmm. um, with the minor changes that they made on defense, they're still so strong. Like, they're young, they're upcoming, just like their offense, and now their defense, man, if these two sides work in unison, this this, division battle is going to be something to watch between the lions, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I really, that's what it's going to be, right? Like you, you got it. If we're speculating here, yep. it's going to be between the lions and green Bay for that, for the defense right. division title. Yep. Just like last, unless year. we get surprised mm-hmm. somehow and we, we get surprised by Chicago or we get surprised by Minnesota. Like that's what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Well, I guess this is the time then we're going to figure it out here and just do our early predictions for the divisions then, Joe. So what do you got for the NFC North? How you got it this laying out? I uh, I don't want to pick one or two. So, <laughs> I, I, so I'll, it's I'll say this. I'll say this. Like, yeah, Not necessarily split. What I'm going to say is like the lines I always root for, right? Like since they've gotten back into the, you know, the realm of things of winning once again. I'm always rooting for them, always pulling for them. But man, they it seems like they're so close, but they always let it slip. So, and you look at Green Bay, 
right now. Mm-hmm. They got everything going from not only are they young, I don't see a major weakness or even a minor weakness. Have you in offense or defense? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to pick the Packers as much as I don't. I want to, I want to pick the Lions. I got to pick the Packers. Number one to finish. I got Lions a very close second. And then, I mean, obviously those two could flip flop. And then I got uh, Minnesota third and then Chicago last. All right. There you go. Minnesota third and then Chicago last. Okay. I'm going to go with um, the Packers, then Detroit, then Chicago, and then uh, Minnesota last, just because I'm not sure what to expect out of this uh, Minnesota team with uh, moving on from Kirk Cousins and those guys. But who knows? Like we said, it's a long season. We don't know what's going to go on. There's tons of injuries that are going to happen. And, and, and you know, by the way, it's mean, all said and given. done. When the season's over, we always look back and like, man, that that was nothing like we ever thought it was going to be. You know, I mean, it was like a blur. I mean, and then all of a sudden it's like, not, wow, it's not always like that. Like we mm-hmm. actually come pretty close, honestly. Like there's probably one or two divisions where we're way off. Mm-hmm. But then all the other ones were like, yeah, yeah, not bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So there you go. That was the. uh uh, the NFC North, we're going to cover two more divisions. And then, hey, the season's starting, Joe. I Just know. right around the corner. Like you said, we got preseason I'm excited. football coming uh, in this Thursday. This Thursday, it's showing That's right. Up. So Preseason uh, games. Preseason Act games. Up. Yeah, the, my team, the Giants, are going to go against the Lions. And there was this a little fight earlier on, too. In the, there wasn't the just joint, one. You know? So, yeah. There were yeah, several, several fights. fights. It looks like it, it oh, looked like man. a you know WWE Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah. Like you got you had you had uh um Daniel Jones hopping in there yeah. trying to protect this guy. Like yep. he didn't start the fight, but he was like, dude, get off my guy. Yeah, you know, yep. and that's good because you get to see some fire from your quarterback. Daniel Jones, we always we always envision him as like this quiet, standalone type of guy, doesn't like to get involved. But dude, I like to see that. That's the fire that you got to see from your quarterback. Mm-hmm. Like protecting his guys and 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 getting in there, and you noticed uh, if you were able to see the video, he ends all the coaches come running in and getting him out of there. Yeah, like, get out no, of there! What are you that's doing? Our, that's our quarterback. You can't touch him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Are, what? Are, that's cool, all, but no, dude. You no, know, that's nuts. <laughs> but yeah, so we're excited to finally watch some of that. Um, and yeah, we're yeah. excited. So we can't wait to see you guys next time, Joe. Why don't you tell it's them where easy. they can find more episodes like this? Uh, you know what? It's really easy, Jim. And To all of you out there, part of our Blitz Nation, we want you to do us a huge favor. Head over to grumblingsmedia.com or YouTube or rumble.com, if you will. If you're heading over to YouTube, subscribe while you're there. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you comment down below. We go live every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. This is where to be. If you love talking football, we're here for you guys. Uh, We had had quite a few people commenting earlier today, and uh, it, it makes it for a fun show. So stop by every single week. Uh, Rumble.com, grumblingsmedia.com. If you want to head over to the website, you can check out all the political entertainment and sports uh, that you'll ever need. It's a one-stop shop over there. And, of course, you can take us on the go with you guys every single day. Wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, we're always there, too. All right. Thank you so much, you guys, and we'll see you next Hey everybody, this is Big John from Grumblings Media, and I just want to say thank you for watching our content. If you want to support our efforts here at Grumblings Media, just smash the subscribe button right here, totally free, or just go ahead and consume more of our great content. Click either one of these two boxes.